Gavin tweets, who impressed you with their growth the most as a playmaker this year? Who impressed me the most as a playmaker? With their growth as a playmaker. With their growth as a playmaker. I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you three guys off the top of my head. Um, the one is obvious, and that's Tyrese Halliburton. Um, and that's not because I'm a hom- homer. Um, it was very cool to see him have the ball in his hands and just be the guy. And he makes, in, in the same way that Jokic just makes the right play over and over again, Tyrese tends to do that. Now, he can get a little tricky with the passes uh, and does the look before the no look and then acts like it's no look. Um, calling you out, buddy. But that was awesome to see. Brandon Ingram, the last six to eight weeks of the season, to me, that's part of the blueprint for the Pelicans. Uh, is you give the guy, you give that guy the ball, you give Zion the ball, and those are your two playmakers. Uh, which is partially why I qu- don't quite understand the Scoot Henderson thing. Um, the third guy I'll throw in there was a late bloomer in my playmaking growth, and that was Jamal Murray because we've never thought of Jamal Murray as a playmaking point guard, partially because he plays with Jokic and he doesn't have that responsibility of being the primary playmaker. And the other reason is because we always just think of him as a bucket getter, as a scorer. Yeah. And then you get to the finals and he averages double digit assists against a really good defense. Like that, that to me in real time, not in a six month period, but in a two week period, all of a sudden we're like, Oh shit. Jamal's a really good playmaker and point guard. Doesn't it feel like the whole narrative around him, Narrative Nerd- has never been bad, but the Narrative Nerd- has changed a little bit. Where this is a guy that's never made an all star team, never made an all NBA team or anything like that. Now we're like, oh, this is one of the, he's a part of one of the great duos <laughs> possibly in NBA history that who knows what the next five years are going to look like, but he's already a champ. Yeah. So he's already done it. And that is, I guess, just, you know, like you said, like it happens in real time. Yeah. Um, I'll throw two guys in there that I would like to see more playmaking from. Right. Does yeah. Shea, is, was Shea too good? Does Shea not count? Was Shea too good last year? Because he's the other one to me that was at sort of a... Um, just turning into a first-team All-NBA player from where he was, I think is... Well, that's that was growth. But, but I he was already too good. And I don't think I don't necessarily think it was like the playmaking that was like this... Again, sometimes when you're that good and you've already established yourself that good, there is a marginal improvement year to year. And... Um, not saying he didn't improve, but I, I didn't, I didn't see that. The two guys, uh, one, I've been saying this for a couple of years now. Um, it's the next step in his game. If he's, you know, and again, he's probably going to sign a massive extension this summer. Uh, Jalen Brown, um, the decision-making, the playmaking, like he has the ability to break down his defender and becoming more of a facilitator in that role. Um, and I know he makes tough shots, but I'd like to see more of playmaking from him. And then the other guy, our guy, Mikel Bridges. I think playmaking for him is probably the weakest part of his game right now. First half against the Sixers in the playoffs, he went nuts. Then they, for most of the rest of the series, they blitzed him on dribble handoffs. They blitzed him on double teams. Um, you know, he had some ISO opportunities, but it's not a strong suit of his game. He, to me, reached a new level this year. For him to go up another level, it's not consistency in scoring or you know shooting 48 and 38 percent from the field in the three-point line it's going to be the playmaking piece uh grad grata from twitter we pronounced it I had a good question i was thinking about this as well um are there any role players in bottom 10 teams record wise this season that could help the top 10 teams going into next season i would add to that like who is uh who's aaron gordon right now now, I wouldn't, not to call Aaron Gordon a role player in Orlando, but who's a guy that you could pick up for cheap that could come in and help a team win a championship? Mm. I'll give you a few. I'm looking at the bottom 10 teams right now. I'll give you, I'll give you, so I'm going to go with established players because uh, that's kind of where you went with that. Um, I'm going to go with Bogdanovich from Detroit. Uh, again, these are all like, these guys are not free agents. These are potential trade guys, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Bogdanovich from Detroit. I'm going to go with Kuzma from the Wizards, who's actually probably you know going to be a free agent. And I'm going to go with the two guys we already said from the Pacers, uh, Miles Turner and uh, Buddy Heald. And by the way, 
I was thinking about this yesterday because we got asked about Draymond leaving the the Warriors, um, which we may get to because I know there's a question about the Warriors in the mailbag. But like, I I actually there's part of me that's like, if they could trade for Miles Turner, I kind of like that. Warriors, Warriors, yeah, they could trade. The the other one is the the uh, the uh, the Suns. They could trade for Miles Turner. I don't even know if he's well, available. Well, the Suns, the Suns indie thing. That's another. Yeah, right. <laughs> that has the, been danced around. For, I know. Well, eight and sign with the for, with, with for indie. four years. So maybe um, they'll finally pull the trigger. Uh, what about what about Jeremy Grant? Uh, I mean, this is the guy. He's made an all. He's a yeah. He's a, I, I, it I, sounds I'm like he's going it. back to Portland, but yeah, that remains to be seen. The other guy that I was that I he's not on a bottom ten team. Um, is a Kongu in Atlanta. I don't know if he will be on that team next year. I mean, he's been, he was great for them and underrated. And I feel like that is it. That's a guy with a bigger role, be really good somewhere. Yeah. Um, we should follow up with the Warriors question because we brought it up. What realistic move from the Warriors do you think would be best from their perspective? Matthias Jerlow on Instagram wrote that. To me, one of the things that happened in the playoffs was sort of the exposure of having two non-shooters on the floor in Draymond and Kavan. So I think some optionality at the big position, whether Draymond comes back or not, I think some optionality there where you can put four shooters on the floor and stay big, I think is important. Jordan Poole is the, to me, the obvious one. If you're going to trade someone, don't quite know what his value is right now. So yeah, I think I think that's kind of the direction I would go. But again, like we this is the thing with the Warriors in general. Uh and this will be even more pronounced in the new CBA, especially in 2 years once the second apron kicks in, the, the rules around the second apron. It it's very hard when you're over the cap and you're a tax team to just be like, "Oh, I'm going to go add players in the offseason." Like you, you have to be able to get Sean Livingston on a minimum, minimum contract. You have to be able to get DiVincenzo on a minimum contract, on Otto Porter Jr., Gary Payton second on a minimum contract. They didn't do that this past off season. And if they bring Draymond back or not, they're going to have to do it again unless they trade Jordan Poole. Do you think that they, uh, they have to change anything based off the emergence of Denver? No, I don't. I don't. I also, do, I also think, you know, if, if, the Warriors could have got past the Lakers. I, that's probably a better conference finals. Because uh, I think that's a... it's Denver, I, to me, was the best basketball team in the playoffs. They, 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 I don't think anybody would have beat them. I really believe that. Um, I don't think anybody would have beat them. I think the Warriors give them a... a it's, not, it's not a sweep. It's a, it's a tougher matchup in some ways uh, because of Steph. Uh, 